July 1st, 1972, the project begins. Before it became Voyager, the mission was called Mariner Jupiter Saturn 1977. The original plan was only for flybys of Jupiter and Saturn. December 13th to December 15th, 1972, the Mariner Jupiter Saturn 1977 project holds its first meeting at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. March 1977, the Mariner Jupiter Saturn 1977 project is renamed Voyager. August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 launches. It's named Voyager 2 because it will reach Jupiter and Saturn after Voyager 1. September 5th, 1977, Voyager 1 launches. September 6th, 1977, Voyager 1 becomes the first spacecraft to take an image of Earth and the Moon. December 10th, 1977, Voyager 1 enters the asteroid belt. December 19th, 1977, while in the asteroid belt, Voyager 1 overtakes Voyager 2. September 8th, 1978, Voyager 1 exits the asteroid belt, heading for Jupiter. January 6, 1979, Voyager 1 begins its Jupiter observation phase. March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 makes its closest approach to Jupiter, flying within 350,000 kilometers or about 216,000 miles of the planet's center of mass. March 5, 1979, first active volcanoes discovered outside of Earth on Jupiter's moon, Io. Plumes extended over 190 miles above Io's surface. Ions ejected by Io form a dense ring, or torus, around Jupiter helping expand and energize the planet's magnetic field. Io acts like an electric generator, sending 3 million amperes of current along Jupiter's magnetic field. The world record for the highest electrical current ever achieved is 2 million amperes. March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 discovers Jupiter's Jovian ring system, a faint set of planetary rings much darker than Saturn's, composed mainly of tiny dust particles. Still on March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 discovers two new moons, Thebe and Metis. Voyager 1 also discovers a detailed understanding of Jupiter's atmospheric movements, showing the Great Red Spot as a counterclockwise rotating storm. Voyager 1 does a flyby of Jupiter's Galilean moons, Amalthea, Io and Europa on March 5th, and Ganymede and Callisto on March 6th. They are called Galilean moons because they were discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610, using one of the first telescopes ever made. April 13, 1979, the Jupiter observation phase ends. Between April 13, 1979 and August 22, 1980, in between Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 1 was very busy. Voyager 1 continued with data transmission and analysis, system calibration and health monitoring, heliosphere studies, instrument tests and upgrades, critical course corrections and scientific measurements. August 22, 1980, Voyager 1 begins its Saturn observation phase. November 12, 1980, Voyager 1 makes its closest approach to Saturn and its largest moon, Titan. It passed just 124,000 kilometers, or 77,000 miles, above the planet's cloud tops. Voyager 1's close examination of Titan's thick haze led to the hypothesis of liquid hydrocarbons on its surface. This was later verified by other future missions, such as the Cassini probe. Voyager 1 confirmed that Saturn's rings are aggregations of water and ice fragments, Voyager 1 discovers three new moons around Saturn, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. 
November 12th and 13th, 1980, Voyager 1 flies by Saturn's moons, accumulating enormous amounts of data. Titan and Tethys on November 12th, and Mimas, Enceladus, Rhea, and Hyperion on November 13th. November 8, 1980, a trajectory correction maneuver, or TCM, is performed. These thrusters are used to precisely point the spacecraft and its instruments. It's the last time they will be used for 37 years. These TCM thrusters will lie dormant until 2017. November 14th, 1980, the Saturn encounter phase ends. After its Saturn flyby in November 1980, Voyager 1's mission transitioned into what NASA calls the Interstellar Mission. For the next 10 years, from 1980 to 1990, Voyager 1 continued its journey to the edge of our solar system, sending back data. While Voyager 1 no longer had planetary encounters, its instruments remained active, gathering valuable data about the solar wind, magnetic fields, cosmic rays, and low-energy charged particles in the outer regions of the heliosphere. Although more selectively and less frequently due to limited power and the increasing distance from Earth, which required longer signal travel time and more efficient data usage. NASA prioritized data from key instruments like the Cosmic Ray Subsystem, Magnetometer, and Plasma Wave System. February 14, 1990, Voyager 1's cameras are turned on one last time to capture a series of images. They included the iconic pale blue dot image of Earth from 6 billion kilometers or 3.7 billion miles away. After this, Voyager 1's cameras are permanently turned off to conserve power. From 1990 to 1998, Voyager 1 shifted focus to its fields and particles instruments. These included the Cosmic Ray Subsystem, measuring high-energy particles from outside the solar system, the Plasma Wave Subsystem, detecting low-energy charged particles and fluctuations in the heliospheric plasma, monitoring ions and electrons in the solar wind for energy-charged particles, and the Magnetometer, tracking changes in the solar magnetic field. Engineers conducted periodic instrument calibrations and maintained communication links to ensure Voyager 1 remained healthy and responsive. Data collected during 1990 through to 1998 was fed into ongoing scientific studies, especially concerning the outer heliosphere and cosmic ray background levels. February 17, 1998, Voyager 1 overtakes Pioneer 10 to become the most distant human-made object from the Sun. Between 1998 and 2002, Voyager 1 remained scientifically active, continuing to push the boundaries of human exploration as it traveled farther from the Sun. It recorded an increase in galactic cosmic rays, a sign that it was nearing the termination shock the region where the sun's solar wind slows as it starts to encounter interstellar gas. During this time, Voyager 1 also tracked subtle changes in the solar magnetic field, helping scientists model the shape and behavior of the heliosphere. Instruments monitored changes in particle density, speed, and temperature, contributing to our understanding of how solar wind behaves this far from the sun. No major systems were shut off, but saving power became more critical during this time. As its radioisotope thermoelectric generators aged, Voyager 1 produced less power, forcing NASA engineers to begin planning instrument prioritization. In 2002, data showed that the intensity of low-energy charged particles was decreasing, while cosmic ray intensity was rising. Strong indicators that Voyager 1 was approaching the termination shock. This led to anticipation that it would soon enter the heliosheath, the outermost layer of the Sun's influence. In 2003, 
Voyager's instruments recorded subtle shocks in the solar wind. Ripples from solar storms that had taken over a year to travel to the spacecraft from the Sun. These measurements helped improve models of how solar events propagate through the solar system. Then, the big moment arrived. On December 17, 2004, Voyager 1 passed the termination shock at 94 astronomical units, where the solar wind slows to subsonic speed and enters the helio sheath. This marks the first direct observation made from within this region in human history. February 1, 2007, plasma subsystem instrument operations are terminated due to degraded performance and to save power. The next day, February 2, 2007, the plasma subsystem heater is also turned off. January 16, 2008, the planetary radio astronomy experiment operations are turned off. Then, on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 crosses the heliopause at 121 astronomical units and officially enters interstellar space. April 9th to May 22nd, 2013, Voyager 1's plasma wave instrument records a powerful solar eruption, further confirming its presence in interstellar space as the eruption causes electrons near the spacecraft to vibrate. July 7, 2014, a second major plasma oscillation event was detected, confirming again that Voyager 1 is indeed in interstellar space. April 19, 2016, ultraviolet spectrometer operations are terminated to save power. November 28, 2017, the trajectory correction maneuver thrusters are tested for the first time since 1980, over 37 years ago, successfully firing to help reorient Voyager 1. This unexpected use of the old thrusters was a critical fix to extend the mission's lifespan, as the primary thrusters were degrading. November 14, 2023, a major malfunction. Voyager 1 experiences issues with its onboard computer, the flight data subsystem, rendering it unable to send usable science or engineering data back to Earth. Commands could still be received, but the telemetry data was corrupted. April 22, 2024. Incredibly, NASA develops a solution from billions of miles away. Engineers successfully re-establish communication and receive usable engineering data by devising an innovative fix. May 17, 2024, Voyager 1 resumes sending back science data from two of its instruments, Pometer and Plasma Wave Subsystem. February 25, 2025, the Cosmic Ray Subsystem is turned off to conserve power. As of June 2025, Voyager 1 is about 166.5 astronomical units from Earth. That's about 25 billion kilometers or 15.5 billion miles. Still transmitting data and holding its status as the most distant human-made object. There will come a day when we will have to say goodbye to Voyager 1. But not yet. Voyager 1's radioisotope thermoelectric generators are expected to power science instruments until at least 2025, with the possibility of engineering data continuing until 2036. But when that day comes and we lose our most distant friend, Voyager 1 will forever represent the human race and the magnificent things we were able to achieve. I'd like to thank you for watching 